Hello friend, this is Ryan Hicks of TalkToProfit.com. Today I want to talk to you about the importance of revising your past for a better future. Now, I have to be very clear from the start. This is something that has been done throughout history. Even in the past, you know, we talk about time travel and things like that today. It's kind of more a modern meme of sorts. But there's been talk of this millennia past. Since one of the be earliest beginnings of human recorded history, people have been talking about can you change things in the past? Can you go forward in the future? That's not what I'm discussing because I, I don't want to get into a metaphysical or philosophical discussion about whether you can materially, physically change past events to be something different than they were. This is important on a mental level and spiritual level because what I'm discussing is you go back and change your view of what happened. You revise that. So you had a bad experience in your past. You revise it and believe something good happened from it instead. Mentally run through the image of what happened, but it having happened the way you wanted it to, or happened in a good way. The importance in this is not about whether you can physically, materially change the past into something good, but it's that you, because of your past experiences, whether good or bad, you have become the person who you are. Your character is built upon those past experiences, whether they were good or bad. For many people, they are limited because of past experiences. They were told as a child they were dumb or they were a loser or they were a failure. And so every time throughout their adulthood that they've gotten close to success, they have subconsciously reined themselves in and sabotaged themselves back to mediocrity, back to failure, back to being a loser in their own opinion, their own view of themselves, because they still view themselves through the lens of that old experience. That negative experience has developed their, their character as someone who fails, someone who loses in life, someone who's not a success, someone who success is not made for. And they'll even find ways of justifying it, talking about, well, you know, maybe God, it's not God's will. And they'll talk themselves out of success. They will do things that guarantee failure. They'll sabotage themselves unknowingly. They're not doing it consciously thinking today I'm going to make myself fail, but they do the things that lead to failure. Not because they are incapable, not because they couldn't succeed, not because success isn't right there in front of them and the opportunity is there, but they'll take something else instead of the opportunity for success because they're viewing the world through the lens of that old negative experience. This is where revising comes in is important. Not about metaphysically or physically changing the past, but changing how you view the past, revising it in your own mind. This isn't so you can lie to people or tell them something happened good that didn't happen. This is for yourself, revising it in within yourself, understanding it as in a good way thus changing who you are today and this changes your current experiences so you'll make the right decisions instead of bad decisions it changes your future to one of goodness and prosperity and abundance because you're no longer shunning those things and things that held you back in the past maybe that kept you from being a public speaker even though you always wanted to but you were told you weren't any good or you went up in front of the class and embarrassed yourself one time giving a speech and now you've always shrunk back from that. There are too many negative experiences that keep people back, that cause them to shrink back from success. And this is where revision as a mental practice for yourself to practice and change your view of old experiences can bring about great results in your life. If you allow yourself to be limited, you allow yourself to be less than you allow yourself not to receive the fullness of the grace of God because you think that you're not enough. You think that that bad experience is what defines you as a person. And it will if you allow it. It will if you choose to allow that to be the defining characteristic of your life. And many times, worse yet, those experiences that we have seen as bad were completely misperceptions on our part. We misunderstood the situation. Maybe people laughed at us and we thought, oh, they were attacking us or they, 
They were belittling us. Maybe they thought we were being funny. And they were laughing with us, not at us. But we have created this whole scenario and developed a whole entire life based on one or a few bad experiences, maybe many bad experiences. But many times those bad experiences were built upon the foundation of this one early bad experience that we have allowed to fester and become the ruling principle in our current life and future. And that should never be the case. This is one of the reasons why the scripture says that forgetting those things that are past, forgetting those things that are behind, we stop thinking about the negativity. We start revising it and thinking about the good and understanding the goodness of God in our lives. Now, if you can completely cast those old thoughts off completely and just go forward now, that's great. But if there's something that keeps welling up in you, something that keeps telling you you're not enough or you, you can't do this or you can't do that, then go back in mentally, revise that situation. Anytime it comes up, you think about that one negative experience, revise it in your mind to be something good, a pleasant experience. Start rewriting that experience. So then you rewrite your current experience and you rewrite your future. It will absolutely change your life. I know for many people it's been, oh, that's just an experiment. That doesn't really work. It doesn't matter. It, we're not talking about metaphysically changing something or physically changing the material reality that happened in the past. This isn't about that. This is about you and your mind doing that. Because your current experience and reality is based on the accumulation of those old experiences, whether good or bad. And you may have had a lot of bad experiences. That's all right. But you can't let them determine your present reality and your future. Because otherwise you just keep going through those old patterns of bad experiences. You sow more, you believe for it more, and you get it more. You sow more doubt and unbelief as to your goodness, your worthiness in Christ. Well, maybe God doesn't want me to have this success. Maybe God wants me to suffer to learn a lesson. And you start telling yourself these lies that aren't true and you keep yourself back. And you can spiritualize it. You can make it sound really good and, and super spiritual that I'm suffering for Jesus. But are you? Why do you need to? If he already suffered for you, read Isaiah chapter 53. What do you need to keep suffering for when he already did it? By his stripes you are healed. Why do you need more stripes? My friend, you can be anything you want to be. God has not placed within you weakness. He has not placed within you failure. He's placed within you his spirit of grace. And by that spirit, you can walk in newness of life. You can achieve anything you want to achieve. Anything that God puts in your heart, the desires of your heart, you can have, my friend. And he will give it to you if you will receive it freely. This is going to take some work on your part, but that's fine. Because when you do this little bit of work that's required, change that past in your mind. Start looking for a better reality currently, understanding that you can do all things. You can have whatever you want to have. You can have whatsoever you say. Then my friend, you will have anything and everything you want, and you will live in that fullness and abundance of God's grace. My friend, I pray this is a blessing for you. May God bless you richly.